Hello everybody and welcome to this video. In one of our previous sessions we showed you how we can get around certain delegation issues in SQL by having Power Apps call Flow and then issuing SQL queries to SQL from Flow and then have Flow return all of the results to Power Apps. It works very well, it's surprisingly fast. The biggest problem with that though is if you're running on-premise SQL servers the the flow does not yet support issuing SQL queries directly or to the on-premises versions of SQL through the data gateway. So this is uh, as per note 8 on the documentation where it says SQL native query is not supported for on-premises SQL server. So that's very unfortunate and although I'm sure it's not going to be the case for much longer, in the meantime you can use stored procedures to get around this limitation. So what we're going to do today is show you how to set up a parameterized SQL stored procedure and then call that from Flow with parameters, return the results to Flow and then back to Power Apps. And again, this works surprisingly well and fast. And I can't wait to show this to you and thanks for watching this video. If you haven't done so, please subscribe and like and share. Thanks for watching. Right, let's first have a look at the data. This is the same table that we used for the query video and uh, it's got 20,000 rows in it so just go and say count ID from just do that right so we've got 20,000 rows in here it's got uh, three columns an ID a name and a title and it simply has Donald 1 to tw Donald 20,000 and then duck one to duck 20,000. So we're going to use the same table, just makes it easier to demonstrate and let's jump into writing the query. Right, so I've got a new query window open and I like to start with a query, I like to build up a solution like this from its most foundational building blocks so that you don't end up troubleshooting things that you don't know if it actually works. So if we can get this query to work Oh, sorry, this procedure to work, then we'll move on to the flow. And once we get uh, get it to work from flow, then we'll move on to Power Apps. All right, so let's get cracking. And there are multiple ways of doing this. You can do temporary tables and all of these sort of things. But from flow, we found this to be the easiest. Um, what we're going to show you now. All right, so we're going to say uh, start with create procedure. And let's just call this get employee by name. And now we're going to pass it a parameter. So we do that by doing an at names and then telling it what kind of data we're going to be working with. So we're going to say this is a varchar and it's going to be max. So it can have like a gazillion characters in the, the query or sorry, in the string because this is going to be a array so basically a comma separated list so this if you're looking for a hundred values then you're going to pass a hundred um, comma separated values in this string so it could get quite long right then we're going to say select and we're going to use an alias for the table called EMP for the employee table and we're going to say EMP.ID which we're looking for we're looking to return as well as the name, as well as the title. All right, we're going to say from temp employees table, and I'm just going to alias that as EMP. And now, in order to only return the data that we're looking for, we're going to join the employees table with the string that we get, or rather with the values in the string. So to do that, we're going to say join, and then we're going to basically split the string so we're going to split the names variable that we got as part of the call and we're going to split it on the comma character and then we're going to alias all of these values to s for string all right so sorry s for string no don't do that all right so s for string and now we're going to say on wherever the employee table, so that's the same as what we've aliased it over there, where the employee table dot name column equals 
we're going to do a trim on the values that we get from this alias uh, array that we've we've basically split over here and uh, then we're going to say go and theoretically this should give us what we need let's run this and uh, there we go commands complete successfully so now well the fact that it created doesn't mean that it's going to work right so let's go and run this and say get employees by name and we're going to pass it a parameter which we're going to set to just for example say donald-5 donald-55 and donald-556 just to be funny all right so select that and run it Ooh, we're getting ooh, because I made a spelling mistake over there and we only got two so if we fix that and just select the execute bit um, we will see that we're getting the correct data so that's working lovely just to clarify this bit created the procedure uh, the store procedure and this one is not executing it so this is why if I want to run this I select that and I click on run then I obviously don't want to create it every time again just on another note if the column which you want to use in the table to compare the the string against or rather to compare the variable against is an integer you'd basically just convert that over here so you'll go and say wherever so typically that will be uh, employee.id equals convert and you'll then turn this into an integer all right so that's what you would do if if the column in the table is a an integer value and not a, a string value as is the case in our example now all right so now that we know that this is working well let's run that again this is very satisfying to see that work now that we know that this is working we can now move on to flow right so from flow we're creating a new brand new flow and we're going to say it's an instant flow and we're going to call it from power apps and let's just call it uh, SQL sproc and create okay so there we've got our power apps as a trigger and let's go and look for our SQL stored procedures so let's just search for SQL and there you'll see is uh, execute a query which is what we used in the previous version or video rather and here is execute store procedure v2 so the moment when I saw um, execute SQL query v2 I was getting really excited because I thought that we'll be able to now issue these queries through to on-premises SQL servers as well I was wrong you still can't do that so this method I'm about to show you is still very very relevant so let's use execute stored procedure v2 v1 works as well um, I just typically like to use v2s uh, because it usually gives you a bunch of new functionality with it and because we're all techies that's what we live for alright so server name we're going to select the server name and database name and now it's going to give us a list of all of the stored procedures and the one that we've created should now be in this list so here we've got to get employees by name and now you'll see that it automatically reads that procedure and realizes that we need to pass names to it and for now I'm just going to hard code this name so let's say again Donald 4 as well as Donald 44 as well as Donald 445 and uh, I've got all my dashes in this time so all of that seems to be working well let's go and save this and then just run it to make sure that we're getting the right data again I like to make sure we're building on a solid foundation otherwise you end up troubleshooting things that uh, that you shouldn't have to worry about so I'll perform the trigger I'm gonna select my SQL server make sure that's all fine and now run this flow okay so let's see what uh, jumps out here it's ran successfully but even though it ran successfully doesn't mean that it necessarily got results so what we're looking for is in the output section in the body 
we're looking for the result set table one and here we've got our results and we've got four 44 and 445 so that's working very very nicely so just while we're here we're going to copy the contents of table one and that includes that square bracket which defines the array in JSON up to that over there just copy that so we've got it later well, what did they do with my copy where's my copy just going to hit Control C or Command C on the Mac, and that now should have it in in my clipboard. Right. So next thing we're going to do is this is a response from Power or a request from Power Apps, but now we need to give it a response. And so now that I've got that in my clipboard, I'm just going to go and add the response, and you'll see that we've got an HTTP response. There is a premium badge over there which isn't necessarily good news keep that in mind it might affect your licensing but for now I'm just going to ignore that that was there and I'm going to go and say I'm looking for the result set of table or result sets and table one so previously you had to actually use an expression to go and fetch table one where this is not included in this which is very cool and now it's going to basically give this result to power apps but we need to warn Power Apps what does the data look like that it's going to get. So if we um, expand the advanced option section, you'll see is the body JSON schema. And luckily, we don't have to go and type in the schema. That gets pretty complex. The friendly people from Microsoft gave us the opportunity to just paste the data in here. And this is why I copied this from, from Flow or that previous Flow run. Just make sure that we've got the... Uh, starting square bracket that defines the array and then we've got all of these records in this case we've got three records um, with the three columns in each record and if you now click on done it's going to type up the schema for us that's brilliant just while we here I always go and remove this required section over here I have seen that this causes problems in power apps when you try and add um, this flow to the power app so let's remove that and just go and save this to be sure that there's no problems going forward and now we're actually ready to go and have the the actual array which we've now hot coded over there let's go and turn this into a variable which we're then going to ask power apps for so to do that we're gonna you can go and just remove that and say ask in power apps the problem is the name that it then gives that parameter is then usually pretty ugly so we like to initialize a variable at this stage and now we're going to say initialize variable and we're going to call this rename init um, var query string let's call the variable var query string and then the initial value we go and say ask in power apps and you'll see the name of this parameter it now uses the name of the action which is in that var query string and then it says underscore value so if we did in this uh, SQL um, procedure action we would have ended up with a very ugly uh, parameter that that is asked for in power apps now in this case we don't need to go and set up the list like do in the SQL query uh, we can literally just go and pass that parameter into this section over here and all of that should work well let's go and save this and then run this again so test we say I'll perform the trigger and you'll see now it's going to ask me um, why is that oh I know why so that's currently set to a boolean so in the variable I need to go and change the type to string really sorry about that it's tempting to go and specify array that doesn't work well I haven't been able to get that to work so method that we're using now is just a string for the for the variable so let's go and save that again and run it again and let's see what we get so so Donald um, I don't know 88 Donald Dash eight hundred and eighty nine uh, and Donald 
1001. Right, so let's run this and let's see if we get those records. It's ran successfully, which could be good news, but let's see if it got data and it did. So we got Donald 88, Donald 889 and Donald 1001. So now that this is working well, we can now jump into Power Apps. From Power Apps, we've got this brand new Canvas app and on here we've just added a button that's basically going to simulate having a list of records which we now want to use in the Looker. So here we've got a few examples. We've got employee name Donald 1, employee name 9, Donald 9555, 9558 and 10555. So this is the same examples we used in the in the SQL query, but um, this isn't pre-baked, right? So this is not actually going to use that flow that we just created. So to do this, let's run this button. So let's just play that. And OK, there we've got. And to just look at that data, we're going to insert the gallery. And uh, let's go and link this to, what did we call that collection? collection is called temp expense list. So let's tell this gallery that you look at temp expense list and now it's automatically picking up Donald one and yeah. so that's that's working well. Let's just go and change those fields. So we're saying that the title is employee name, that's fine, and then she use that as expense ID. Okay, so there we've got our list that we're now going to use in the lookup. All right, or we'll use to to form the the lookup that we're going to pass to flow. Right, so let's go and add another button. And this is now where we're going to actually do the query and let's say so call sproc. And the easiest way to do this is to go to actions and then click on flows over there. And this is going to give me a list of all of the flows in my environment that use Power Apps as a trigger. And here we've got uh, SQL SPROC, which is the one we created now. It's going to add it to the Power App. And if you haven't removed that required section um, from the schema and the response, then I have seen this is where it fails to add it. And then it gives you an area and it said that it was a bad command or something like that. But anyway, so over here, we're going to go and specify what we want to pass to flow. And uh, let's just expand this. And we're not going to say, you'll see that it asks me for the parameter, and this is that init var query string value. And what we now want to do is we're going to basically just pass it the string of IDs or string of names that we have in the local um, collection that we've just created with the previous button. So we're going to say we're going to concat. You'll see it's now asking me for the data source and that's the temp expense list that we created earlier. And the expression is we're looking for the employee names or the employee name column and we're going to be using a comma as a separator. Alright, so this is going to call, let's close all of the brackets, so this is going to call flow but flow is going to give me a response and the way that I'm writing this at the moment I'm not going to do anything with that response. So what we now want to go and do is say clear collect and let's just call this local data for the collection and then we're basically going to write the response that we get from flow into this local data collection. So let's go and copy that. Alright and uh, that seems to be working well. There's no errors or issues there. Let's go and run it takes a second to authenticate and all of those sort of things first so it might take a while the first time you run it but we didn't get any errors so let's go and have a look at that collection it says local data and then there are the values that we got back from flow brilliant just go and add a gallery just to put it next to the data that we actually used in the query just to make sure that flow didn't miss something Sorry, so I get the gallery in the right place and I'm going to say call local data and then we see Donald 1, 9555, 9558 and 10, 
triple five. So that's working exactly like we planned. Let's go and run it again just to see how fast it is. So you'll see it takes under a second to get the results back from Flow, which is absolutely staggering and um, very happy with this result. And if we go back into Flow, we can see that, uh, just refresh the screen, and we can see that these Flow runs took under a second. Um, there's a zero seconds, there's a one second. I mean, this is extremely fast and amicable. Well done, Microsoft. This is top stuff. And uh, here we can actually see all of these actions, including the store procedure, took under a second. And uh, this result that it wrote to Power Apps. So I think this is a, a very good example of what can be achieved with Power Apps, even though Power Apps doesn't directly support it. Because of the vast functionality available on the Power Platform, which includes Flow, obviously, there are very few things you, you can't actually get around. And this method of stored procedures we've been able to use extensively um, in the past and it works extremely well. So boring for that little premium connector hiccup, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, but except for that, the solution works extremely well and uh, please go ahead and use it in your solutions. So thank you for watching and uh, please join us again. If you haven't done so, please subscribe and share this video. It really helps us to get the message out there. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.